Yellowstone is more than just a national park. Beneath its expansive forests and geysers lies a giant magma chamber. The last major eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago, forming a 70-kilometer-wide caldera. This system is not just a single magma chamber. Researchers from the U.S. Geological Survey and Oregon State University studied the area beneath the Yellowstone volcanic system and found that while an eruption is unlikely anywhere in the area, changes in the northeastern area of the volcanic system will be key to understanding future eruptions. Scientists at the USGS mapped the magma-bearing underground areas within this volcanic system. Understanding the location of magma is crucial for predicting volcanic activity and informing the public about potential risks. This study provides a clear picture of how magma is distributed through the crust at Yellowstone using a method that is most sensitive to the presence of magma and is an ideal tool for imaging volcanic systems. This method relies on the Earth's natural electromagnetic field. At Yellowstone, the largest volcanic system in the United States, this magma mapping method has provided new insights into how the system can change. DELA in the future Scientists mapped rhyolitic magma, a type of magma or hot molten rock that has caused previous explosive eruptions in Yellowstone. The study found that, throughout the Yellowstone volcanic system, the percentage of this rhyolitic magma is low, indicating a low likelihood of an eruption anywhere. However, a region in the northeast of the Yellowstone volcanic system has the potential to produce more rhyolitic magma due to the presence of an underground heat source known as crustal basalt. The northeastern region has a direct connection to the underlying crustal basaltic heat source that could trigger the formation of additional rhyolitic magma in the region. This could mean that someday, though certainly not now, there may be enough rhyolitic magma to cause eruptive activity in the Northeast, said Ninfa Bennington, a geophysicist at the USGS and lead author of the study. From our research, we can assume that although volcanic activity in the western part of Yellowstone may be beginning to decline, future activity may be concentrated in that northeastern region. This knowledge will be crucial for assessing the potential for future volcanic hazards in the region. Adam Schultz, a professor of geophysics at Oregon State University and a collaborator on the project, said the findings reinforce that volcanoes are dynamic features and that the magma sources that may be beneath them evolve over time and migrate. What we're seeing really demonstrates the migration and evolution of these bodies because we can now image them, particularly by harnessing the power of magnetotelluric methods to image magma bodies, Schultz said. This information can be used by those interested in modeling the dynamics of these systems, and that can contribute to risk assessment efforts. The USGS and its partners maintain a network of instrumentation to monitor activity at Yellowstone as part of the National Volcano Early Warning System. Today, we live alongside one of the greatest geological phenomena on the planet. Our understanding of this system is not to be fearful but to be prepared for and appreciate the natural forces that shape our world. Yellowstone is more than just a national park. It is a mirror of planetary dynamics, a reminder that the Earth is alive and that geological time runs far beyond our perception. Meanwhile, geologists have long known that large, 
Shallow rhyolite magmas like those in Yellowstone require a significant heat supply to remain active and prevent freezing. This heat source is likely related to the migration of hot basaltic magma from deep within the crust to the shallower crust where the rhyolite resides. Furthermore, the influx of heat from the deep-sourced basalt may be necessary to prime the rhyolite system for eruption. In other words, the influx of heat into the shallow crust can increase the proportion of liquid magma in the magmatic system, potentially triggering an eruption. Widened smoking soils devoid of vegetation are another visual clue to ongoing hydrothermal activity at Yellowstone. These bleached areas are called acid sulfuric soils. These soils form when intense heat flow and large emissions of acidic gases, such as carbon dioxide, CO2, and hydrogen sulfide, H2S, alter surface rocks and create poor growing conditions for most plant species. Yellowstone's acid sulfuric acid basin emits gas in much larger quantities than its geyser basins. For scientists studying magmatic gases, this area is a, quote, spot to learn more about the underlying magma system. Brimstone Basin, along the southeastern arm of Yellowstone Lake, contains an area of acid sulfuric acid soils covering approximately 1.1 square kilometers, 0.4 square miles. By analyzing the helium and carbon in the gas and the oxygen and hydrogen in the water, scientists determined that the gases were indeed coming from a warm system deep beneath the brimstone basin. So indeed, the area is a remnant of an older, differently active system, but it is not dead yet. Yellowstone is the most beautiful volcano in the world, but we must remain vigilant for sudden eruptions 